Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. You just found the perfect product that helps with staying cool during hot summer runs. No more gross warm water. Stay cool with this product from Gear Handle. This hydration tube cover helps keep your water cool and easily accessible. Stay hydrated during those long summer runs or even delay from freezing in the winter. Plus, they're compatible with various brands of water bladders and come in various colors. Visit GearHandle.com and use promo code H2O today. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, That means you're basically like a VIP member and there's two different levels that you can, you know, subscribe to and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get or exclusive merch, exclusive merch. You could get um, first dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is only on Patreon. And the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows. So if you are far away and you couldn't make our last live show it will be on the website we're going to record this future live show it's going to be on patreon but also bonus episodes each month you guys tell us all the time you want more episodes this is a way for you to get more episodes so you're going to get our basic tuesday thursdays that we always put out right but if you're on a patreon your vip you're going to get more I can't wait to talk about in detail some more stories because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. (laughs) They just unsubscribed. (laughs) They, this is also going to be the exclusive place that dirty chat is going to go to. So if that is breaking some of your hearts, just go ahead and subscribe now in order to hear the full content. It's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey, y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. And, 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 this is your bloody happy it hour. Is. It's Thursday. We're singing the whole episode. Hello, hello, hello. It's Thursday. We Take were... your shoes off. Get comfy. Yeah. Grab a drink. Yeah. We're going to go to the UK and, and the South Africa and the Iran Ooh. and the, no, we're not. But we're we're going to go to Netflix first, but first I'm drinking a, you know, just a regular old white claw, I'm but drinking it's a tall boy. vodka and lemonade, lemonade, you know, I don't know, I'm just, you know, <coughs> sipping Slackers. on Slackers. We need mm-hmm. a, I need, we need a fridge up here so we can keep stuff in here. Um, <clears throat> so Netflix. Okay. So I, this weekend started watching. The worst roommate or the worst ex? The worst ex. The worst ex, ex on ever. Netflix. Yeah. And it is really, I think it has a bunch of different episodes, you know, like um, whatever. Series? Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it's not a series. It's not about one story. It's a bunch of different stories. Oh, uh-huh, stories. uh-huh. Definitely going to have to cover some of those, but I just kept watching them. And yeah. I was like, this is great. And it kept your attention? And it kept my attention. Wow. Yeah, no trials. I A friend did say watch it it's totally bingeable like do it do it do it do it 
Yeah. But there is a worst roommate. roommate. It's really good. That was the one with the grandma who. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 I've so been season both, two so. just came out. So I think. Oh, well, maybe, maybe like this summer. I saw it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe like this summer. So. Um, Go watch that. Pretty good. And don't watch Deliverance. Okay, tell them about Deliverance. You were just telling me about this, and I did not know about it. So growing up, I would always like to watch. Like I've watched the original Exorcism, watched all the Poltergeist. The yeah, yeah. I, yes. I watched Poltergeist. Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. Um, but then, like when you, after it's like all made and said and done. You hear all these horror stories about on the set or like the people that died afterwards and just all this. I never heard any of those bad stories. luck that comes with so it. So like random people just started dying who people on that the were set. on the set. Carol Ann's dead. How Carol Ann did? Well, how old is the movie? No, she died uh, like when she's the age of Carol Ann. <gasps> oh, no. Why did she die? Because she looked too close to that screen. She was lost in the screen. And then, oh. Because um, you were saying if you watch it, it opens up the portal. So you can watch all these videos and they're like, do not watch this video. Do not watch this movie. It will open up demonic portals in your house. Do not watch it. Do not watch it. So then it had like Monique, who is like one of the characters on there. And she's interviewing and she's saying like this and this and this happened. While we're on set, the producers. Oh, Monique's Grant, in it. Monique is in it. Oh, she gone. <laughs> Monique is in it, and I don't know that Bonique, Bonique. She's one of those people that says the universe, the universe, the universe all the time. So that leads me to believe that she, she doesn't want to give it to God. She wants to give it to the universe. So she may be an unbeliever, like nature and stuff. So then, yeah, you're really gonna get. Yeah, she's possessed. No. So anyways, look on you look on YouTube or TikTok and then see what they're saying about the Deliverance movie. Watch it if you want to, but you better have your oil and you better rebuke wear your any and rosary. <laughs> Do your rosary. Get your holy water. But you know, it's always Catholics that they show that get the exorcist get like the demonic well, I guess possession. Yeah, and why is that? And it's always the Catholic priests that come I know. and like help them. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but that was just What about any of the other movies that were like um I don't even know what it's called. Like where the house, the whole house is like haunted by like a, like spirits oh, and like they're getting... conjuring. So yeah, they yeah, said yeah. things happened on the set. And then to the those nun. people after doing Conjuring, The Nun. So there's certain movies, especially when they're based, like Deliverance is supposed to be based off true story. <gasps> Isn't there already a movie called Deliverance? Yeah, but that was that was about some inbreds that like to eat people. This is an actual. Could they not a think of a I think new that was name? a town called Deliverance. Oh. This is like Deliver Us from This Evil. Maybe they should have named it Deliver Us from Evil. Instead of <laughs> Deliverance, because now it's two movies with the same name. And two totally different movies. Well, watch I, at your own risk. At least I'm going to watch the preview. Watch the preview and watch the tick. Like, look what TikTok says about it. I don't. That's basically CNN. I mean, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't watch CNN. I do have a doll in the house, so I could already be like edging on the portal, mm -hmm. you know. But the doll was a gift from who? Well, it was just a joke because they're like, they just knew I did true crime, and so they got me a doll. Yeah, it's the scariest doll. The doll has like. Uh, tears that are like like permanently on the doll's face and one of the dolls my friend's kid dropped and its face fell off oh <laughs> i hide the doll under the cabinet every, every time, time i go she over. Comes over she hides the doll because it's in, in the, the bathroom so i can't pee it's in with the, the guest doll. bathroom like propped up like as a decoration it on just purpose stares at you when you're to washing scare your hand. people and to think to get people to think I'm real weird. And yeah. they probably look at it and they're like, how oh, the hell do you have this doll in here? I was like, this might be why you're still single. I know. I'm like, if they go into that bathroom. Funny. <laughs> I said, because it's funny. And they're like, no, it's weird. I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm like, you touched it. Now you're, you have the, what do you, cursed. Now you're cursed. Possessed. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. What you got for us today? Okay. Let's go to the UK and to a couple other places around there. So this is about Carmen Thomas. She, um, in South Africa in night. So this is where she was born. Okay. But then she ends up moving to New Zealand and the UK and London and all these, which to me, it's a world traveler. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much definitely not in the same place. I do know that. I know that Korea and Hong Kong are different, and I know that South Africa and New Zealand are different. Okay, I hope so too. I looked on the map before I did it, just so y'all know. So, Carmen was like a lot to deal with as a kid, but she was in a good way. She was loud, outgoing. She had a lot of attention on her. Um, She loved to put on a show and dance and sing, and she was kind of like just like her own little princess. But I don't know anything about where her dad is, but all I know is that It's just her and her mom. And whenever they were, whenever she was three, they moved from South Africa to New Zealand. And that's when her mom had either had been dating this guy or whatever. But soon after they moved there and were there for a little bit, Mama Teresa gets married and she marries this guy. What's his name? Neville. Okay. But Carmen loved Neville. They got along great because she was just a three year old. So. Oh, yeah. So they got along great. He ends up adopting her. Mm. And they just had this great relationship. But then whenever she was, when Carmen was 10 years old, he dies. Oh, man. And so she took it really hard. She was really close to him. And, like, things just weren't the same. She was having a hard time dealing with the, with his death. And so then mom was like, oh, I just really hate seeing you so upset. So... Let's go ahead and move to Yorkshire in the UK because they have some extended family in there. Yeah. Family's yeah. always <clears throat> the answer. So that way, you know, she, it's not just like her and mom. It's like she gets to maybe go over to a relative's house and stuff like that. So she, they move there. She slowly starts getting back to her old self again. And she quickly makes a lot of friends. And at this point, she's like starting to be a teenager. She starts to you know, do the whole party thing, get into trouble, sneaking out, you know, just normal teenage stuff. Literally normal stuff. Um, Having a good time. But mom was like, I am over your behavior. Like, you are sneaking out too much and you're kind of just doing a little little too much. Yeah. Almost doing the most. And she's how old now? She's She's in her teens. She's just like like 16, 16, 17. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, I mean. You don't want to lose control that early. Yeah. So, mom was like, we're going to move back to South Africa. And oh. she's like... Moving is the answer to her. Well, Mom is always moving. And she's like, um, I'm about to graduate. Let me just stay here with my friends and graduate. So mom's like, okay, bet. I'm going to go. And she stayed with the relatives to finish out her like senior year. I don't know, mom. Yeah, I don't know about that. So She already lost the daddy and now you're leaving her. Yeah, yeah. like... I don't understand that. So then finally she graduates high school and then she moves. I mean, this is a moving family. This is a moving couple. Yeah. So she moves to Southampton, which is also in the UK, and she goes there to go to college. Okay. So around 2002, she she graduates with a degree in marketing. And then from there, she moved to London. This is too much. And this is where she stays. This is where (laughs) she's always wanted to live. And it's kind of been her dream to live there. The little girl, right? Yes. Carmen. Carmen. Yeah. So it was like the perfect place for her personality. She loved the whole nightlife. And she had, she, she was a beautiful girl and she could just charm her way into anything. So she was getting her, getting into like exclusive parties. She was being VIP. She was getting bottle service. She was getting drinks paid for, like all the things. She just was, her charismatic personality and her beauty just got her all the things, all the things. Um, But it was one of these nights that she met this guy named Brad. Oh, never trust Brad. Brad Callahan, I believe his name is. We'll just call him Brad because... 
I'm going to say it about 14,000 times in the uh, episode. So here we go. And he's an engineer from New Zealand. Okay. So Brad was a year older than Carmen and very sociable, loved having a good time, stuff like that. They had immediate chemistry, um, but their relationship moved pretty quickly. And within a few months, they moved in together um, into red his flag, apartment. <laughs> There's already two red flags. The fact that his name's Brad and that they moved in together the next day. Yes. So they were, um, yeah, they moved, they moved together into his apartment and it wasn't all like butterflies and rainbows or whatever you say. Um, because they had a little instability. They would do the whole break up, get back together, break up, get back together, mm. break up, get back together, break up, get back together. It's a Brad thing. Um, <laughs> And they, some friends were like, they described their relationship as kind of volatile, but they didn't really go into detail. Like, I don't think there was. Yeah. Probably just like, arguing. Yeah. So, like, just like, like probably like out. throwing stuff at each other and yelling and screaming and all those, whatever. Um, yeah, they kind of were a little vague on the details, but they did think that they rushed into the relationship and they also, the friends thought that they were better just being friends they were like they're not good together uh -huh. they just need to be friends they don't need to be together okay. so in 2004 there's a turning point carmen's pregnant oh he has to trap her so this was like okay this is we're gonna fix our relationship now we're pregnant a baby fixes everything a baby fixes everything uh, I'm about to go have one. Go, I don't know what I'm fixing, it. but I'm fixing something because yeah. that's what babies do. So they were like, yeah, this will, we want to have a stable environment for the baby and we got to get back together. And we both came from broken families or like his mm. parents were divorced. Her parents, like her dad was missing and then her stepdad died and all the things. So they were both, they just wanted to, Keep it together. Wait, her first dad was missing? Well, I mean, I just know, I don't absent. know, absent. I don't okay. know, he was not in the story. Okay. So I, I just said missing. He was absent. <laughs> so um, they didn't want their kid to go through the same thing. But, mm, you know, as one could guess, they continued to fight and they're like, we can't make it work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And they figured it would be better for baby Jack. Jack's baby. Okay. Um, to have parents that were separated and happy rather than together and fighting and yelling. Okay. Which yes. is co parent good. Well. Yes. So they were like co parent. They were like both very committed to co parenting. They were amicable. They were like their lives were revolving around Jack and they were able to put their like personal feelings aside and just be there for. Jack, Good. baby Jack. Good. Could you imagine like breastfeeding Jack? You're like, hey, Jack. <laughs> I don't know. A, a it's one of those old people names. Or not old people. But. Can I tell you that I had a dream that I was still breastfeeding? And so in my dream, my boobs were filling up with breast milk and like they kept leaking on my shirt. So I'd have to like change my bra because that's what they do. Yeah. And then I was like. But then I felt it in my dream. Like, I was like, oh, my like my boobs were producing. So then I woke up and I thought I was pregnant and I was all paranoid. Oh, hell, but I don't, even got, test. <laughs> I don't even got a uterus anymore. <laughs> so my mom says, maybe you miss your kid. And I was like, oh, maybe so. I hadn't breastfed oh. him in a long time. <laughs> you need to break because he needs a feeding. He went back He's to college. He's hungry. He went back to college and he hungry. Oh. <laughs> oh. We divert. Poor Trent. Um, so not too long after, uh, they realized that they were going to, um, you know, do a co-parent. Brad ended up moving back to New Zealand for work. So I don't know where they were. They were living. He was in New Zealand and maybe he, I don't know how far New Zealand is from wherever they are. Yeah, so here, maybe. The thing. So she ends probably up. Probably a train ride. Yeah. In 2008. So I guess this is, he's probably about, he was, uh, Jack was born in 2005. So 
for a few years they were together or they were like living near each other or together. He moves back to New Zealand. Then she eventually follows him and goes to New Zealand to live like a mile down the street from him. Not that she's like follow, follow, but she just wants her to son close, yeah. to have his father in his life. And so they agreed, okay, you, the, you'll move here and I'll move here and we'll, That'll be easy. It's like a week in a week kind of thing. So this arrangement worked out great. It was a mile away. That was perfect. All the things. So by 2010, so a couple years later, uh, Brad starts dating somebody else. And uh, Carmen loved the girl. And they. it was still no issues. No issues with the new girlfriend. Blah, blah, blah. Nothing. And then the next thing you know, Brad's girlfriend is pregnant. Oh. And so Carmen was actually excited because she's like, oh, good. Jack will have a sibling. So there's no love there. I love it. She is totally she's done. Done. Yeah. Okay. But it could be because of what she's doing, like what her job is at the time, which I'll tell you in a second. Oh. It all seemed well. And then it's 2010. You know, he finds out that he, like but he's expecting whatever. Um, June 29, 2010. It was uh, Brad's week to have Jack. Well, Brad has Jack for the week, and then he goes to bring Jack back or or calls Carmen to come pick up Jack. Carmen doesn't answer. Texts her. Carmen doesn't respond. <clears throat> and this is on June 29th. Goes by the house. Carmen's not there, and her car's not there. So he was like, well, that's weird. Um, she's supposed to pick up jack or get jack so i'm just he just kept calling her calling her no response no response um he asked around asked some friends if they'd seen her no friends have seen her and finally after it had been two weeks <laughs> you know you usually wait about two weeks before jack's police file and missing reports person are reports. missing well and, you know, she didn't, I, I would, you would think like, is there nobody that missed you for two weeks? Yeah. Where's your mama traveling the world? She yeah, forgot she about you a long time world. ago. Yeah. She done. And also Carmen at this point was an escort. I was going to guess she was a sugar daddy. Sugar baby. Sugar baby. And she had a sugar daddy. So, oh, escort. And it's <clears> legal <throat> there. And you get insurance. Oh, hell, I'm moving. Yeah. It's legal. Oh. Goodbye. So, police are actually taking this, very the disappearance very seriously. They are DTF. Are I they? I almost said are they're you? BTK. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, they do. They do. They okay, start so they right care away. about their prostitutes yes, over they there. Do. And I don't, at we this don't. point, they didn't know that okay. she was an escort. An okay. escort is different because it's a high class kind. Oh, she was. It's like weird. Rich men. Yes. Okay. So it's like being on Raya versus Bumble. So dating apps. How do you know what Raya is? Because it's a dating it's app or it's a fame. Like you have to be have like a certain income or you have to be a certain level of famous or a certain of, you have to be like bougie to have and that. You have to show proof. I think because I, I don't see know, dirty tried. Chad on it and lying. No, not on oh Raya. well that's true. Yeah. I think they would see his picture and be like, <laughs> no. <laughs> so they're doing their investigation and police end up finding Carmen's car abandoned in this uh, city called Hamilton, which is about an hour away from where they live in Auckland. These are all New Zealand's okay. places. So they live in Auckland. Her car is now found in Hamilton, which is an hour away. So they live in Waco and her car is found in Dallas. Let's okay. just say. Yeah. Great. So someone in the area reported an unfamiliar car parked in a residential area that led to the discovery of the car uh, and the recovery of it on July 13th. Okay, so June 29th is when she was missing. missing. He didn't even report it for two weeks later. And then somebody said that they saw the, and that was July 13th. I almost took Brad's red flags away and he just gained a third. Yeah. He began in. in the car was a packed suitcase along with two 
mysterious envelopes. One had a note kind of implying that there was a debt owed, and then one of them had cash in it. And like I said, she was an escort, and she it seemed that she owed money to somebody named Misty. But at this point, Brad was like working super close to the police. He was being very oh, injecting himself in the investigation. He was being very cooperative. Red flag. So they four. didn't, you know, think he was involved in any way because he was just being very cooperative. And he informed them that her work name, her professional name, her escort name was Misty. So that's why the envelope said Misty because uh, it was labeled to her as she's Misty. So uh, Brad <coughs> knew she was an escort this whole time? So she was an escort, and then she had stopped being an escort, and then he didn't realize that she had started again. Okay. That pissed him off. And I'm thinking that's what pissed him off. And this is kind of like, it just, yeah. Is this from your show you're watching? No. Okay. This is just randomly, I came across it, and I listened to it, and I actually kept my attention, so then I was like, oh, that, I like okay. it. Okay. So police thought, okay, maybe like Carmen could have had a bad experience with a client, like which is not uncommon in that like type of um, very not scandalous but high risk uh, kind of a job, right? Yeah, it's high risk. Um, and so after finding those notes in the car, they're like, okay, let's go check her apartment. So. They check her apartment. They see some a little bit of blood in some places, but then they're like, let's just, let's get the luminol out. Yeah. We got to see. So there is blood that looks like it may have been cleaned up. There's smears and droplets in the bathroom and in, like in the dining room area. And there was also this strange oily residue in the kitchen. And I hey. still don't know what that would be from, unless it was just like olive oil. Avocado oil? I wonder. Oh, okay. To be continued. So, Carmen had texted some friends and I guess her manager in the early part of July. Early part of July. The 29th is when she's missing. But she's not missing because she's not technically been call it like it still had been too right so this is early july she's still texting with her friends she's just saying she um needs a break and she's gonna be in hamilton for a while okay this is kind of her texting her manager yes okay. her texting some friends and manager and her friends were kind of suspicious about the text because they seemed like a little weird like it wasn't how she typically texts hmm. because like you know um some people will be sticklers on spelling things Properly like you and say punctuate. K or okay. Exactly. That's a big difference. Yes. And if you like don't add your apostrophes or your commas or your periods or exclamation marks and stuff like that. They just felt like it was out of character for the text messages and for her to leave her son. They're like, she would never leave Jack. Okay. And Along with the blood that they found, they also found an unknown person's DNA on the suit in on the suitcase, and then on the uh, on the envelopes that were found in her car, um, which suggested the involvement of another person. But they didn't know who it was yet. Yeah. Meanwhile, mom's still traveling; don't even know she's missing. No, mom still probably she's, don't know. Yeah, she's yeah. In <clears throat> oh, she eventually Ireland. does find out. Actually, in like. In like maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks. Police start searching the CCTV footage in Auckland, Hamilton, and like other areas that are close to where she might be. And they find her on some footage at a farm near her home and at a grocery store the day before she disappeared, wearing a blue scarf, acting normal, leading them to issue they're like well she they saw her on video i think it was like at the end of june is when they saw her on mm -hmm. video in hamilton and so they're like okay well she was here then and she was acting fine um like what what are we missing what are we missing so they start to the go to the public and they're like okay we are looking for uh whatever certain items because i don't think they 
I don't think they had her phone or her keys. And I know that this is whenever her mom did start pleading on like TV for her safe return. Um, it's but mid July. Let by me get then. back from Barbados and go find yeah, my missing she daughter. She finally got back from you know Greece and. She came back and was like pleading for the safe return for her daughter. Um, but suspicions towards soul bratty poo um, started to rise because new information started coming out. Oh. And Carmen's disappearance was now being treated as a murder, not a disappearance. Okay. Because you know when that happens, I know whenever they like, all of a sudden, like the police will just tell you all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're not, we're no longer looking for somebody missing. We, I guess, cause they have the evidence. They uh -huh. just don't have enough. It's, I guess, circumstantial, but they don't have enough to prove it. So they can't, so they know that they are dead, but they don't know who did it or where or whatever. This is no longer a missing persons investigation. This is now a homicide investigation. Yes. Okay. The worst. So, um, this is whenever... Carmen's apartment landlord comes forward. Okay, landlord. And I don't know why it took. He was the sugar daddy at one point. Uh, this was a, this was a man landlord. I mean, a woman landlord. Oh. And the landlord actually lived right next door to her apartment. Heard the bed creaking all the time. All the time. She loved it. She came forward and reported it to the police that on June 29th, the day that she went missing originally, that landlord landlady was sitting in her own apartment. She heard a lar large ag argument next door, and she heard a little bit of shouting and screaming and noises, and she probably thought they were just doing rough, but yeah, she didn't really know. She was like, okay, um, it kind of she would kind of like wait till it get quiet and she's kind of listening, just like, what's gonna happen next? like whatever. And then a little bit of time goes by and she goes out and she kind of starts peeking through. I think she's peeking through her window to look through her other, to look through her window because she didn't go outside yet. But she's peeking through the window. She said it looked normal inside. But there was a there was a garbage can and there was a I don't know why you would think a garbage can is normal on the inside, but it's fine. <laughs> There's a garbage can bin, like a trash bin, I guess. Uh -huh. um, and a laundry rack like if you're hanging your clothes to dry like a like a half yeah um laundry horse uh it had been knocked over and the trash can is knocked over but nothing else really stood inside out. the house inside this the is house all... okay you know i heard arguing okay well she was just like i'm just gonna mind my business she pays her rent on time so then she notices outside that Brad is outside just standing by the driveway, but he's standing there and it was really strange because he's wearing his boxers and a t-shirt and he's holding his jeans and his shoes and he looked like he had just gotten out of the shower, but his shirt looked like it had blood all over it. And so she goes up to him and she was like, what happened? And he explained that Carmen had been sick and previously in life, she had been diagnosed with some uh, type of cancer and she had to go through a little bit of treatment and she would get sick every now and then just from, I don't know, she was, she was in, she was over the cancer. Yeah. She beat the cancer, but I guess she, it, it wasn't abnormal for her to throw up and blood be in her throw up. Oh, wow. Okay. So he was saying, well... She was throwing up, and that's how I got some of her blood on my shirt. But she's okay now. She's just in there, and she's resting, and she's sleeping, and she's sick, and blah, blah, blah. I'm just in my boxers. Don't worry about it. It's them, fine. Them, the, you know, the, he was probably convincing. Them brads, they're good liars, and they're very convincing. Very true. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, um, landlady was a little suspicious. She's like, oh, I don't know. I hope so, landlady. So, later that day, she was like, okay... I do not feel good about this. I'm going to text Carmen and I'm going to just be like, hey, are you okay? Like, is everything okay? So she texts to Carmen. Carmen responds and says, yeah, I've been really sick this week. I went to the hospital for a bit. Heading down south for a week off. We'll be back sun. S-U-N. Not Sunday. 
Oh, and Carmen doesn't abbreviate. Carmen does not abbreviate. She has to write the whole word. She has to write the whole word. And whenever she said hospital, she wrote H O S P. No. Can you not even text the rest of the letters? Or send the a hospital emoji? <laughs> it writes the word for, for you. you. So this is a text that multiple friends are getting. And they're like, this is not how she texts. And she stopped texting a whole bunch. Like she barely was texting anybody. And it was just all this weird stuff. So now people are like starting to look at Brad. Please do. <clears throat> So in late July, Carmen and Brad's phones were always near each other, which is weird. This is late July. She went missing June 29th. So why are they together? And it shows from records that in the beginning of July, they just were texting back and forth, back and forth a bunch. And those messages were, were gone. from Carmen and Brad, but they were in the same place. Oh. So like it's like me and you in the same room right now just texting each other for hours. Yes. Like why I'm going to text you when I'm sitting right next to you I can talk to you. I'm just going to text you? Yeah. Setting that up. Mhm. And this is also whenever she was texting her friends and that's when they started noticing that her the writing style had changed, shortening words in the text, spelling words wrong, using weird abbreviations, all stuff that was unusual for her. So if you get texts from me and my spelling is all correct and my grammar is all correct. Oh, I definitely know it's Red not flag. you. It's <laughs> for sure. If I don't if know. If there's no mistakes, then you know it's, it's not If it's past me. eight o'clock and I'm texting gibberish, <laughs> that's completely normal. Yes. If I'm texting like full sentences, like a full mind and sound after eight o'clock, <laughs> it you know not, it's not me. It's not mm -mm. you at all. So we know now. And, and then if you're, Sometimes you don't even text past eight o'clock. I don't. Because you're in I'll, bed by like 10. I know. I've been going to bed so late lately. I don't know why I have not been able to fall asleep. Oh. Maybe the weather's changing. Um, so police start, they look, they finally like get his phone and they are like seeing where it was certain times of the month and like weeks before. And they noticed that he had been making these like strange late night drives to um like around Auckland, like the area that they lived. Oh, is he during times parts? when he wouldn't normally go. Like maybe he went to the grocery store or he went to a store during the time where he should be at work or something like that. And they uh this was when they they only they were like, okay, there's blood. There's this weird stuff that happened at with the landlady that, that she told us. And now he's making these weird trips. Let's go back again and look at CCTV at these different stores around mm -hmm. town to see if he like purchased anything. Well, turns out he did. Wait, and it bye. was on June 28th, the day before she went missing, that he purchased trash bags, cleaning supplies, you, you know, know, just the, the basics. The basics. It's He's just going to do a good deep clean. Yeah. And the, this was what led to, they're like, okay, now we got to get, uh, we got to do some searching and, uh, cause we don't have anything concrete and we got to do some searching. So Brad was, um, an engineer and he was a structural engineer. Okay. So he worked in construction and one of his coworkers had reported seeing him get to work extra early one of these days to the construction site without his normal work clothes on and, or he didn't have any of his safety equipment on either. Um, and Shit. this coincided with the day that I don't know anything about construction, but let me just tell you this and you might, the, he was he was there acting kind of weird, dressed kind of weird, not with his stuff. This was the same day as, Whenever a steel rod was found to be too long during the concrete pouring, which could lead to structural issue that could impact a building's integrity. And Brad, being a structural engineer, was like, no, just ignore it and move on, which was weird. So basically this like steel pole, as yeah. I understand it, 
It's supposed to go all the way and, you know, fit all the way in the hole, but it wasn't going all the way in the hole. Like something was stopping it from going all the way mm -hmm. down. So then they're like, is there a body in the hole? Uh-huh. Are the concrete workers coming and saying this now? Like, saying, yeah, well, they were like, well, it was weird. He showed up here. He was dressed this way, and he and was like here job. extra early, and he doesn't get here that early, and he was here extra early to make and sure then that that's they his don't job is to make sure that. It. And so he's the structural engineer, so like he should be super extra careful about. You want to make sure the pipe goes all the way in. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want just the tip. You no, need the full I thing. Never the tip. Mm -mm. And you don't just ignore it. And then on top of that, <clears throat> close by where these um, construction workers, they'll eat lunch outside or whatever, there was a very, very smelly trash can. Oh. Oh, trash was... bin, I should say. Okay. They call them bins over bins. there. So Flats. it was like kind of where they ate lunch and they're like, man, what is this smell? It's so bad. We're going to have to go eat lunch over there. Because over here it smells so bad. They're like, what is in this trash can? So they look in the trash can and they find like all these bags and they're like, gross. Close it and just move on. Bert. That was a bird. <laughs> so they close it, they move on, and they're like, we're just going to leave all that stuff inside and we'll just tell the police. And then eventually the smell went away and they were like, okay, well, we don't know what's going to happen with that. Blah, blah, blah. So this is. Like we're, we're like July. This is like all happening in the month of July. Yes. Okay. So it's beginning September and the trash can turned up again. The same one? The trash bin. Yes. A neighbor who lived two doors down from Brad said somebody's trash can had showed up in his yard or like on his sidewalk or whatever, you know, cause we have the big trash bins and he had an extra one. He was like, I don't, this is not my trash bin. I have an extra trash bin. <laughs> Wait, when they were smelling the trash bin, where were they? At the apartment or at the construction? At the construction site. Okay. So this is the same trash bin that's it's, been all over. Oh, yeah, because it was real. Because it was in her apartment, right? Yes. Now it's at the construction place. Yes. Now it's at a random person's house. Yes. That's why he's driving all over town. <laughs> yes. So the police go and they go to pick up the this trash can. They're going to investigate this trash can. So in this place, I don't know if we, this is how our trash cans are, but they have um, numbers, I guess, that are like a sticker with the numbers uh -huh. on it. That's like, lets you identify like which house it belongs to or who's the owner or whatever. Yeah. Well, it was completely scratched off. Like, you know, when the actual dumpster grabs the trash can mm -hmm. and it makes those like uh, scratches from the metal arm thingies or whatever. Um, it kind of looked like that, but it was like definitely intentionally scratched off. Okay. Well, little did Brad know that the police have a way of using heat to heat up the, that area that had been scratched out and it somehow can reveal permanent markings that have been on plastic. <laughs> so then they get Damn. the full number of the trash can and then they connect it to where it belongs, which is his house. Oh, it was his own trash can. Yes. Dumbass. No, it was Carmen's Hers. trash can. Okay. It was her house. It was her house. So they're like, huh, why is Carmen's trash can over at this guy's house? And this trash can's been all over the place. This yeah. is the traveling trash can. It is. It is. So there were no new leads at the work site. They... Finally went back to investigate that, and they found nothing. There, the whole steel pipe thing. We don't know why the pipe didn't go all the way in, but there was nothing in there under there that they needed. There was nothing in there. They they found nothing. They were hoping oh, they, they were going to find. Some, they were hoping they were going to find something at the construction site, oh, shit. buried under that steel pole, but they did not. So whatever. I don't know what happened with that. But <clears throat> then they. We're going to go back to July 2nd. So we're just living in July. Mm -hmm. We were, the trash can was found in September, but now it's rewind a little bit to July. Okay. So Brad had a friend that he had called and he was like, Hey, uh, can we go like on the boat tomorrow? And he's like, yeah, sure. That's fine. And he's like, okay, can, can we go like at five, 5am? 5 and the friend's like, 
no, bro, I'm not going that early. Like, I'll meet you at nine. How I'm is that even not fun? Going at five. And I guess wherever this, I guess they boat in the ocean. This is the ocean. This is not yeah. a lake. So, um, they w- they get there, and Brad seemed to be he just act- was not acting weird, and he. The friend said that he looked terrible. He looked like he hadn't slept or showered in days. And the friend was like, are you okay? And he's like, no. He's like, I'm in very serious trouble. Oh, shit. Dump these, dump these bags off the, off the water. And he, Scott Peterson, straight up told his friend he killed Carmen. He says, I killed Carmen and I need help dumping her body. <gasps> and the friend did it. The friend did not not do it. And the friend did not do it. But the friend did not do anything else either. Friend. Oh, he was a good friend. So then Br- <laughs> the friend is like, wait, what? Brad opens the trunk of his car, whatever. He drives, I don't know. He shows the friend multiple plastic bins that have been... Filled with, it's concrete, right? Yeah. Filled with concrete. And they each had body parts in the bins of her that he had cut up and put in these bins and then filled them with cement. What? Ken and Barbie? So it's like a couple bins had had legs. One bin had the torso. One bin had like the head and the feet. Chopped the... Uh, uh. Yes. And he wanted the friend to help him dump them in the ocean. So they unload the bins and they do it into the boat. Oh. And they're driving out in the ocean. He had a chance to go away to get away. This friend, an anonymous, unidentified friend, is driving the boat and then is like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it turns around and is like sorry bro oh okay. can't do it so they have to like awkwardly unload these big huge plastic bins and put them back into his car great <laughs> good job uh so friend re- uh, refused to participate yet he did not call the cops oh so then brad tries some other friends <laughs> he's like hey friend i need like uh what was he saying he needed kerosene uh, now I want to burn up the cement. He wanted, oh yeah, yeah. He's asked one of his other friends, can you please bring me three black trash, three black uh, bags and a bottle of kerosene? Keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you that text. Keep quiet. <laughs> the uh-uh. associate brought the kerosene and, she brought it. and met the friend and met Brad outside of the grocery store where this is where he had purchased. <laughs> this is where they found him on camera purchasing the trash bags and the cleaning stuff. I want everybody out there to go to their best friend text and text. Read it again. What did the text say? Can you please bring me? Well, can you please bring me three black rubbish bags and a bottle of kerosene? But keep quiet about it. Dot, dot, dot. Keep it quiet. And I need to hear all the responses. (laughs) Can you please bring me three black bags and a (laughs) bottle of kerosene? Dot, dot, dot. Keep it quiet. (laughs) Send it to like four friends right now. I am. I am. (laughs) So over the days. um, Okay, let's see. So he once he got that stuff, his friend got that stuff, whatever. This stupid friend. Got all the stuff, and that's whenever he had gone to the apartment to try to wipe up all the stuff, cleaning all the blood sweater, the evidence. And this is when he starts to put the stuff in the trash can inside the house after he had cleaned it all up. Yes. So. Okay, say it again. I'll send in my text. Oh, okay. So he, let's see, multiple friends. So the friend brought the shit over. The friend brought the stuff. He starts, Brad starts cleaning the apartment, cleaning up all the blood. Oh, so he's saying bring this to me at 
at I don't, Carmen's I, I house? I think that he might have just been at the store in the Walmart, but he just is like, hey, friend, can you go grab me this and this? And so maybe they, but I thought they saw him buying it. So he must have gone inside the store with him, with his friend to buy the stuff. Or this is after they've already attempted to. Well, remember, we went back oh, we went because backwards. we September okay. is whenever they figured out that uh, she was, they had considered her a homicide. Yeah, yes. So then we go back and we're like, okay, what did he do? So on July 3rd, when she went missing on the 29th of June, July 3rd is whenever he asked his one friend for the boat. So he tried to the, be Scott he Peterson. He tried to do the, yes, he tried to do it on the boat. Friend wouldn't dump him with him. And then he calls his other friend. He's like, hey, we need to get these trash bags and this cleaning stuff. And then the friend helps him get all that stuff or something. Keep okay. it quiet. Uh-huh. Then he goes with the stuff and he starts cleaning up the ha- the apartment, cleaning the blood. And he's putting all the evidence and whatever in the trash can. But he's putting her body pieces in these trash bags then put the trash bags in the trash can, then loads the trash can into his car. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then that's when he eventually... Takes it to the different places. M- goes wherever and then eventually puts the bo- the body parts in different little mini containers and then, like I guess, leaves the trash bin, the big main one, first... He probably did that at the construction site. Yeah. And then that's where they were smelling it. And then he brought it back over to the neighbor's house and left it in the neighbor's house. So he's like doing the most. Mm. This is what he's doing in those two weeks before he even said she was disappeared. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So he's doing all this in those, in those, within those couple weeks. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so he was like disposing and this is how he's trying to cover it up and blah, 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 blah. So, um, all these, um, and I, I think he even like, there was another friend. I think there was like three or four friends that he told why none of them reported it. I will never <laughs> understand. I don't care if Bro you're, code. <laughs> there is no code for me. I am oh not trying to goodness. testify and I'm not trying to be an accomplice. That is. So if you don't tell me that you killed somebody because I'm going to be, first I'm going to, fr- I'm going to freeze <laughs> and then I'm going to slowly, I'm going to do the uh, you Homer Simpson respond. into the bush. <laughs> I'm you just going to hide respond. into the bush. Yeah. If you, but if you tell me to my face, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be like, I'm, I gotta go, <laughs> and then I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> I don't. know. I'm gonna make sure I'm safe because you might kill me because you don't kill somebody else. So all these tips start coming in. Now the friends are like, oh, I guess oh, yeah. we probably should tell yeah. since you know she's dead and chopped up, and so they tell tell all this information which led to Brad's arrest in connection to her disappearance and even though the body was not found they still they haven't found the body we don't even know where these bins went yet okay and he's still saying not guilty like he's 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 being arrested they don't they don't have the bins but they do have the friends so now that they have the friends coming forward saying this they can officially arrest him okay so WTF happened so after breaking up this is what we think happened, okay? Um, they, he had gone, okay, he had found out that she was being an escort again. Mm-hmm. They got into an argument, they got into a fight. And according to him, he snapped. There was a baseball bat. He don't remember. He blacked out. <laughs> he remembers before and after, but he snapped. He just hit her in the head, blow to the head, knocks her out, and then hits her eight more times till she's dead. Because as he was leaving after their argument, he she says, allegedly, according to him, this is just his story, uh-huh. that he says, well, you're not even Jack's dad. Oh. And that's apparently what pissed him off. His trigger. So that's what we say could be the motive. Oh, wait. I got a DTF friend. She says, well, where are you at? I'm at the team dinner about to leave now. (laughs) 
<laughs> she what? is down to cover your tracks. Be like, I need care. I need bleach and kerosene. <laughs> Say, can you also get zip ties? <laughs> So after, um, uh, okay, <clears throat> the, they then, they've arrested him and now they're like searching his car and they find all the clues in the car. They find that he's torn the carpet out of his car. He's like, try to replace it with other carpet that would fit. They notice that um, they're like, it smells like decay in here, decay and air freshener. Ew. They, um, Rip, what in the what in the in his car in his car okay they rip up the oh, they rip up this carpet that he had like put down and they notice that the cushion below is like stained in blood and they find a mark on like the window or the windshield of the car that looked like a we like a okay if you're rolling a trash can that's at a school and it has those four metal balls that are wheels, yeah, yeah. it's like one of those. Okay. It almost was like an impression of it somehow on the car. I guess he hit the thing, the trash bin wheel on the car and it matched up to the trash, the same wheel mark matched up to the trash can These mark. These police are pretty legit. They are. They have been working since the beginning. So they found a mark on the car that looked like a wheel impression from the trash can. They matched it to the trash can that had been tested. And the blood in the trash can and in the car matched to Carmen's DNA. Thank you. So it was clear at this point that he murdered Carmen and put her in the trash can. He put the can in the car and while driving, the can opened... <gasps> And spilled blood out into the back seat. That'd be my luck. <laughs> That'd be my luck. He then dumped her body, later cleaned up the car, and used air freshener to cover up the smell. Fabrice. <sighs> it don't work that well. <clears throat> so then they look at the writing from the note. They remember they found those like envelopes in her car, and one had Misty on it, and one whatever had nothing on it. But then they were like, oh, this is Brad's handwriting, mm. which it looked way female of a handwriting. Oh, it was okay. that. That was a the handwriting was a was red a, flag. Oh yeah, he's already got that's his fifth one then. Yeah, so that was another piece of evidence. Um, and then apparently on his computer, he was searching blood, how to commit the perfect crime, how to <laughs> clean blood, murder, etc. Premeditated. So despite appearing to be um, totally fine around, you know, his actions like didn't show like that he had any remorse or anything, but it, he was, so he's arrested. He has some attorneys. He pleads not guilty, but then his attorneys go to the police and they tell the police where the body is buried, even though he's not guilty. Yeah, I mean, I didn't do it, but I know where the body is. Yeah. Police find Carmen's dismembered body in a wooded area in West Auckland, buried in multiple shallow graves with her torso, arms, legs, and head placed in separate plastic oh. bins filled with concrete. Oh my the goodness. same bins he was trying to load onto the boat to drop into the ocean, but the friend turned around and didn't do it. So over these days, I get, I think they said it was, uh, well, however, those couple of weeks, he had cut her body into eight pieces to prepare for the disposal. Um, cut her knees at the knees, Shucks. cut her hips at the hips. And arms and head were also severed I do, from we her say torso. this every time somebody gets cut out but i do not want to cut through a chicken i don't even I like breaking do off a chicken wing off of a ch full a full chicken yeah like when you get the rotisserie yes, from the and you have to pull the leg off and i'm like ah, could you imagine sawing, sawing a human through i kind of want to watch though I just, and I don't like messes. Like, how do you do that? And, like, well, there should have been so much more blood. And then 
why is everybody doing that now? Like it has not worked. You do it in the bathtub because you think all the water is going to go down the drain. But Mm-mm. you're no. more likely going to get rid of it if you just leave the body right there. Yeah. <laughs> I just. That's my best friend <laughs> She's calling. She's like, why do you need to know? Why do you need the kerosene? You got to answer it on air. Hello? Where are you at? Downtown. Are you going to bring that stuff? Yeah. Where, where, downtown where? At the Alico. <laughs> You're being recorded. Look. <laughs> Don't do that. I was, this is part of the story and this guy like killed his ex and he texted his friend and was like that exact text that I sent you. And I said, oh, okay, let me see it. Let me, let me try it out. (laughs) So I read your response and I was, well, shit, she's down for whatever. (laughs) It didn't even sound like a red flag. What'd you think I was doing? Text message. So I was like, she yeah, was thinking. Let me know. And then when I got there, I would ask questions. Oh, okay. Well, you did good. Love you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> She's like, I hate you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. The he had set. He ended up. Okay. Okay. So he was. He ended up getting charged with murder and perverting the course of justice after attempting to cover up Carmen's death by messing up the investigation, lying to police, and asking friends to lie. Brad knew where Carmen was, but tried to hide his tracks. He got six years for perverting the course of justice, and he got a life sentence with possibility of parole after 13 Uh, years you know because the judge believed that he had a bright future what you know so can't uh on september 21st is when he was charged with the murder october 1st police were directed to the graveside of the body they found the body And they were able to then determine that she had died from multiple blows to the head with the fatal blow causing a compressed fracture of the skull. And her parents were able to at least have a funeral. Mm. And now the baby, baby Jack, is now living in an undisclosed location with, I guess, her family. Hopefully not the mama, because the, mom, the grandma, the so grandma's just gonna leave him, him too. <laughs> Let me hush. But she I, lost her baby. I'm just playing. Um, but he had a baby on the way too. I know, and I, it's That's, like the jury was like, "He's a dad. He's got a baby on the way. We don't need another baby without a father." I don't like it at all. He must complete rehabilitation before parole eligibility in 2025. Okay. Well, on the New Zealand Herald. Mm-hmm. Well, that's so. That is the story of Carmen Thomas and her crazy ex, Brad. Brad. Never trust, trust a Brad. Never trust a Brad. Or anybody wants to move in that quick. But you know what? He was moved. This is what I understand. It's behind jealousy. It has to be because he found out she's a prostitute. But you were moved on. You were having a baby. Like, you were all the way moved on. So why did you give a shit if she was making money off her poontang? He couldn't let it go. I guess. I don't know. I don't... I. This is why I don't Men think Men can you... do it, but they can't take it. <clears throat> yeah. Always. Always, always. And then he was probably even more pissed that he didn't give a shit that she was moving on. Or she didn't give a shit that he was moving on. That's true. And having a kid and like she was just living her best prosti- legal prostitute life. 
legal prostitute life. Poor I little thought Jack. I could deal with everything myself. I couldn't. I was extremely stressed and emotional. I was very good at portraying that everything was okay, and it wasn't. Uh, that's Jack. I mean, that's uh, Brad. Mm-hmm. Well, good story, good story. Okay. So there you go. There There's you all go. your red flags. <gasps> we have now gone to the UK. Uh... And New Zealand. Dismembering her body was an extraordinary thing to do. The refusal to accept responsibility, the persistent attempt to involve other people in your deception was extraordinary. This is extremely rare. The question is, why did you do all of that? Rejection. She did not. I want initially him panicked. I wish I had got caught right away. Everything I did was a deeper hole. It was like he claimed that he had no intention of cutting her up. He put the dead woman in her own wheelie bin, <laughs> wheelie bin, and hoisted it into the back of his car. And then he became desperate and he thought of dismembering her. Oh, this is like uh, this is like a recent article. I know this sounds callous, but it was never meant to disrespect her. From my point of view, it was merely a means to an end in trying to dispose of the body. My intention was to make easy, to make it easy to transport, to put on a boat. I didn't have some kind of vicious intent to hurt her no, even further. At even all. though I did, I was just desperate. I had Carmen in a wheelie bin <laughs> in a boat. Of in the in you can't the can't take no, it serious no, when he says listen, wheelie bin. I had Carmen in I had Carmen in a wheelie bin in the boot of my car, and I was so desperate. I just I know how horrendous and horrible it is. At the time, I was extremely selfish. I wasn't thinking about Carmen or her family or or your son or your kid with her. Oh, um, I'm generally not an emotional person, but when I come emotional. I can't handle myself. Wow. Oh my gosh. But when is he getting out? We do not consider any form Parole of blanket order for Yeah. Wow. Oh, Sir Ron rejected the suggestion, suggestion paying the parole board was a public, blah, blah, blah. Public has the right to know what happened in the hearing. Okay, so this is the, the parole hearing was a public hearing, and that's when all of this came out. Oh, got it. Got it, got it. Okay. <laughs> Damn. So there you go. Good story. Good story. Um, there's no telling what we're gonna talk about next week. There's really no telling. No telling. <gasps> Atlanta rapper Rich Homie Quan has died at the age of 34. What? He was just they were just talking about him in the trial. He has died. How did he die? They were just talking about him at the trial. If he wasn't testifying or, oh, if he's in jail, he got killed in jail because he snitched. Oh my gosh. Let's end the show. I got to figure this out. All right. We'll see y'all next week. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye y'all. Bye bye. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. Are you a podcaster? Let's talk podcast hosting. Are you tired of your current podcast host? Need real support in a community that gets it? At Rogue Media Network, we offer top-tier podcast hosting services to help you thrive. From hosting and distribution to dedicated support, we've got you covered. Starting as low as $25 a month. Join our community of passionate podcasters today. Contact us at hello at roguemedianetwork.com.